Hello, and welcome to Frequently Asked Questions about the Ovation Awards. My name is Beverly Fairclough, and I am the Vice President of IABC Toronto's Awards Portfolio. This is my second year as Vice President after serving four years in the portfolio as Director. I was also responsible for doing the initial setup of the Ovation Awards online entry system when we first took the process online, and I continue to try and find ways to streamline the process. So I'll be able to answer those uh, online entry questions for you later. I'm here with Joe Langham, an accredited business communicator and a master communicator, the highest honor IABC Canada can bestow on an individual member. Joe's a senior communications practitioner with extensive experience in both independent consulting and public relations agency environments. So she has won numerous Ovation Awards and is a judge for the program. If you're preparing an entry for the 2014 Ovation Awards, you'll definitely benefit from this webinar. Joe, hi Joe. She's on another hi, line. Hi everybody. So over the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to review the awards entry process through the most frequently asked questions we receive from entrants, and then we'll answer any other questions that you might have. So we'll address questions relating to the creation of the work plan. And one second, sorry. Um, the creation of the work plan, including which category should I choose? Can I enter multiple categories? And what do I include with my goals, objectives, and measurement? We'll cover what work samples to include and what judges look for in an entry. We'll also cover the basics such as how to know if you qualify for the member rate and some of the common mistakes people make. Finally, we will go over submitting your entries on the online awards system. By walking through these questions, we'll cover the process of ent entering the Ovation Awards and we'll take more questions at the end, of course. So Joe's going to speak about what categories to enter. Thanks, Bev. Um, which category to enter is a frequent question that we get on any award program, and to a certain extent, it's a personal choice based on your project and your success. Um, your best place to go is the call for entries, and that outlines 19 categories, and they're spread across three divisions. There's communications management, communication skills, and communication creative. You, you really need to think when you're choosing a category as to why you think the project is a potential winner. If the project started from a communications plan because you were aiming to accomplish something in particular with it, then you may want to think about entering it as part of an overall program in one of the categories in the communications management division. The management entries tend to be those that have more than one string to their bow. If there's a particular aspect of the project that stands out, consider one of the categories in the communication skills division, such as publications or writing. You could have done a bigger program, but you think that your publication really rocked within it, then look at the communication skills category. If there's a visual aspect to the project that stands out, then consider entering it into one of the categories in communication creative, such as publication design. Really what we recommend is look at the categories carefully before you make your selection. Making sure that your entry is in the right category is a key to success because when it comes to judging, certain categories do get um, assigned to people who have more experience in them. So you want somebody who really knows what you're talking about to be judging your entry. If there are multiple categories that apply, then choose the one that aligns to the strongest, strongest element of your program. Choose the one where you really think you rock it. You can enter the same pieces in as many categories as you want, as long as the entry is tailored to the category in which it's being submitted. And I really can't stress this um, enough. Uh, really make sure that if you're putting it into a media relations category, that that's what really sings uh, throughout the work plan and work sample. Um, make sure as well that you state the correct category and division on the work plan and on the online entry form. As I said, you want to make sure that that uh, gets to the right place. 
Uh, just a uh, quick word so that you know uh, there is a new category this year. Um, photography, it's been brought back. And that is original photography that was created or commissioned for a particular project. Uh, and that can be submitted to the category. It could be a single photo, uh, could be a photo editor um, uh, essay. Um, but we now have the category back within the awards. Um, something like a video. Uh, videos you may want to think about entering into Division 2, Category 16 uh, within the communication skills area um, and put it under the multimedia or digital contact if it actually, sorry, content if it meets the requirements for that category. Um, remember that the entries are judged based on the criteria in the call for entries. That should always be your go to place. So a lot of people ask, can I enter multiple categories? And if so, how do I do that? And as I just said, the number one thing to remember here is absolutely, yes, you can enter multiple categories. But if you take the same program and enter it into multiple categories, for goodness sake, tailor it. You can submit as many different entries as you wish. Uh, each entry must meet the requirements for that category. Uh, and the same program can be entered into several categories. Um, if you tailor it to that specific category, so if you did an overall plan with a lot of elements, absolutely put it in a communications management area. Um, and then if you also want to talk just about the media relations, you can put it into the media relations um, category. But make sure that you edit that entry so that your uh, goals and objectives and your results and everything else about it really focuses, for example, on media relations. Uh, you do have to put each entry uh, separately through the online system. And yes, each entry fee applies for each entry. So if you put the same program into six different categories, you do need to pay six times. Uh, if you are online and you want to put multiple entries on, enter the first one. And at the end of the process, you're going to have the option to choose Add Entry. And then that's when you can start over with a new application. So, um, let's talk now about the overall work plan and, and objectives and measurement uh, and everything else that goes with that. Um, you will notice when you look for the call to um, entry number one, um, it will ask you for your name, your organization name, division, category, etc. Please put that at the top. Um, of the work plan, even if you've also filled it in in the entry form section, put all this information up at the top uh, and definitely make sure you put your summary in there uh, because that's what would be used if you get to an award of um, excellence to help with the uh, wording for the People's Choice Award. The um, goals and objectives, absolutely, people are always asking about uh, tips on objectives and measurement. Don't forget, though, that they're one section of the whole work plan. And at the end of the day, really, everything that you write in this program should be aiming towards your objectives. And I'm just going to go through each of the different headings that are in the call for entry uh, and what you need to think about putting under those. So the first three, business need and opportunity, stakeholder analysis, goals and objectives. The business needs an opportunity is absolutely that. You need to explain clearly um, and succinctly what the situation, the opportunity, or the problem that your organization faced and how it affected the organization. This is not the place to say we needed a communications plan. This is the place to say what was affecting, what was facing the organization. Um, and really, if it isn't very clear right at the beginning, this is the first thing judges read. Um, then your entry is less likely to be a strong winning entry. Uh, because definitely, again, when we look at the evaluation and measurement, we want to know that you're solving a business pr uh, problem. The stakeholder analysis, you want to identify the critical characteristics of your audience. Uh, and we don't mean absolutely, please don't put Canadians. Please don't put women. Um, that isn't an audience. You need to look at things like what are their needs, their preferences, demographic, psychographic, characteristics uh, and what, based on these things, uh, what led to the development of the solution? What it is, what is it about these people you were targeting that actually meant that the, the solution you came up with was the right one? We need to know that you understood your audiences and their needs. 
if we look at goals and objectives, the goals are describe what the project was to accomplish broadly. Uh, you really only want to put one or two goals in detail into the work plan. Make sure that they make sense, that they're oriented to the organization's future needs and the need that you've identified above. And make sure to include how you plan to measure success. Now, objectives obviously are, uh, they examine outcomes like quantity, time, cost, percentages, quality, reach, other criteria. Uh, and again, they still need to directly address the stated need, and you need to talk about how they're going to be measured. Um, you definitely want the objectives to be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Um, and your entry is going to be judged to the ex on the extent to which these goals and objectives address the stated need. So as I hope you're beginning to see, everything at the end of the day needs to refer back to that business need and how it's going to address that. If we then move on to um, the four, five, and six headings, solution overview, implementation and challenges, and measurement and evaluation. The solution overview, this is the strategy. This is the research section. This is, here's how I came up with what we decided to do to address the issue. Uh, you want to summarize the project in this section, the program, the campaign, and describe the rationale for why you did what you did, what your chosen approach was. Describe the impact uh, that this is going to have on the business needs or the opportunity. Um, it definitely should demonstrate your, your thought process. What research did you do? Uh, what, you know, what imagination uh, or, or different approach did you come up with to problem uh, solving? How did you involve stakeholders? Who did you talk to? What did they tell you about the issue that helped you make your mind up? Um, and definitely here is the place for your key messages outline the tactics and the communication vehicles. You don't have to go into huge detail on the tactics, but you definitely want to outline why you chose them and what they are. On the implementation and challenges side, um, you by challenges, it doesn't mean something came along to knock you off your course. It's what are the things you had to consider when putting your solution together. So, you know, what was your budget? Um, you know, if it was a smaller budget, you can still come up with a creative solution, but it might be more of a challenge. The time that you had, the technical equipment or other resources you had to use, regardless of the size of the budget, what were the things that actually uh, you had to take into account when implementing the program and what were they as challenges? I can't stress enough on the budget front. You have to provide some kind of budget information or you're going to be penalized in the marking process. Uh, we appreciate that sometimes you can't provide an exact budget because of propriety reasons, but at a very minimum, give it an approximate budget. Um, and definitely you can check the confidentiality box on the online site when submitting the entry. Uh, you want to talk about things like how you made efficient use of the budget, uh, you know, how you made good use of the time frames or other limitations and challenges. Uh, what were the special circumstances? How did you address them? Uh, what we're looking for in this section really is your flexibility and your capacity to resolve problems, negotiate solutions. On the measurement and evaluation side, it's a really important section uh, because measurement is key to demonstrating the success of the program. Um, it's true on the ovation work plan. It's true every day in communications. You have to be able to measure that success. Uh, and we absolutely want to see in this section how successful were you against the objectives you set earlier. If media relations wasn't an earlier objective, then it doesn't matter if every single outlet in Canada uh, covered your program if that wasn't what you were going for in the first place. So please make sure um, that you outline against the objective you had earlier. We're also looking here in to see like what steps did you take to measure the results? Um, what did you do here? Did you do a survey? Talk about that as well. Um, and that every um, result you have is linked to one or more of the objectives you had. Show the results that are, that are valuable, thorough, convincing, 
and make sure that you include the criteria you use to evaluate the results against the objectives. Um, your uh, entry here is going to be judged based on the extent to which it actually aligns measurement with those objectives and demonstrate either output-based results that measured increased volumes, for example, as an indicator of process, or outcome-based results that show an influence on awareness, understanding, opinions, attitudes, or business results. You want to make sure that you provide that thorough evaluation that supports the results. And you also, if you did a survey for evaluation here, then I can't stress how much you want that survey in your work sample when you get to it. Okay, I'm going to speak a little about uh, work samples. Because uh, once you have your work plan together and you've gathered all your samples, you're ready to go online and put them there. So with the online application process, um, each entry is limited to maximum of, of 10. So when you're uploading them, you have to choose what you want to share. Um, they should demonstrate the scope of your work and the solution as described in your work plan. So don't just submit something because you happen to have it. It needs to speak directly to what you're submitting in your work plan. Uh, some of the things you can include as a work sample is a communication plan, a publication, photographs, summaries of your research, media releases, a copy of your budget because you do have to submit and speak about your budget and everyone wants to know. I can't fit it in the four pages of the work plan, where am I going to put it? Submit it as one of your work samples. We'll accept it there. Choose the samples that best represent your work and, your, and that support what you're saying in your entry. Ones that are relevant, meaningful, and memorable. So you can submit up to 10 and on the online system each sample can be up to 10 megabytes. So there's quite a bit of leeway there. Um, we, we, are often asked if you can PDF your work samples into one document and upload it. Uh, yes, you can do that if you like, but just remember that when judges are looking through, they're looking quickly. So if you save the last best piece and, and set the end of your PDF, judge might just look at the first few and never see it. So choose carefully what you upload and how you package it when you upload. Also, when you're uploading your work samples, make sure that you name each one what it is and if possible in your work plan, name that work sample. For instance, budget, communication plan, and then just name it the same in your work sample. That way when a judge is looking through and saying, where is that work plan, where is that budget, where is that photo, it's labeled right there. They can easily find it on the back end of the system. And when you're submitting, basically the online system won't let you submit in a program that we don't accept. So, but try and use Word, PowerPoint, Excel, JPEG, QuickTime, Windows Media, and PDF. You want the judges to be able to access your material quickly without having to download new programs or whatnot. If they can't open it within a matter of minutes, they're not going to look at it. So submit all your work samples. Um, photos, videos, whatnot in low resolution and there's also the option of submitting um, uh, a URL to, to those pieces. Um, if you have photos or videos or, or a website that you want, just enter the URL and the judge can quickly go to the link. Uh, same goes with audio files. Uh, make sure that they can just click and go to it uh, rather than downloading it and having to wait for a specific program to open. Um, if you have a closed website that you want to include and you want a judge to look at it, you need to submit the URL as well as a password that they might need to enter it if it's a private uh, website. If they can't, like I said before, if they can't access it, they won't look at it. Um, so make sure that you have all of those that information. Uh, now Joe's going to talk about what do the judges look for and how do they score the entries. I'm sure that's what you all want to know. <laughs> okay. So and the first thing I'm going to say is remember that 
all of the judges are actually human. Um, the scoring typically happens with two judges independently reading um, an entry, de deciding what they believe it should be awarded, and then talking to each other. Um, often they will agree completely on how the entry um, has been judged and, and whether it's worthy of an award. Um, the process is that if they don't agree, then they will talk it through and they will look at the entry in more detail. Um, just so you know, entries don't compete against each other. There isn't only one award in the media relations up to 50,000 uh, category. If an, award, if an entry is, is worthy uh, of winning an award, it will win an award um, against the established scorecard, no matter how many others have won the same award. Um, as you can see, uh, or not, because we've moved on to the next slide, um, if you are going to win an award, your entry needs to get 5.25 and above to get an award of merit, and 5.75 and above to get an award of excellence. Um, the IABC scoring uh, method is uh, between 1 and 7, 7 being you walk on water, 4 being a competent uh, communications uh, program, and typically the judges will start at a 4 and go up if you're wowing them and down if, if uh, something's missing. So clearly you can see, um, you know, a program needs to be really, really good um, and the entry itself needs to be uh, good. It's always very sad when um, a badly written entry spoils what looks like a good um, program. So uh, again, I can't stress enough, look at the call for entries that will really help you make sure that you have the information in there that the judges need. Uh, communication management entries, um, the judging goes that the work plan and the work sample are each worth 50% of the score. For the communication skills, the work plan is just 40% and the work sample is 60%. And on communication creative, the work plan is worth 25% of the marks and the work sample is worth 75%. It doesn't mean that those uh, the same headings aren't needed in the work plan area, it just means that for some of the awards it's more, uh, the work sample gets more of the percentage of your score. So what are the areas that the judges are looking for? Um, it's so that you know the Ovation Awards are judged using the same criteria as um, Gold Quill. Um, and there are uh, judges' notes and tips throughout the call for entries document, so again, take a look at that. Uh, over and above all, the winning entries have to meet clearly stated objectives. We want them to be original and demonstrate that results are, measure, uh, are based, measured on outcomes, not just outputs, um, but what did you make that audience do? How did you actually affect the, the uh, bottom line or the need of the company? Uh, judges will look at how well a program is conceived and executed. So you know, your stakeholder analysis, the impact, etc. They'll look at how appropriate the strategy and objectives are in relation to the results. So does it really align with the objectives and strategies um, in the program and with that business need? Uh, judges will look at how those outcomes are measured and achieved. Yes, we want good uh, uh, outcomes, but we also want to see how did you measure them? Uh, you know, something to the effect of my boss told me the program is great really doesn't work. So Bev's now going to talk about some of the common mistakes that are made on Ovation entries. Okay, so common mistakes. Some people are always worry, you know, maybe I didn't say this right or maybe I didn't do that right. The most common mistakes are technical. Um, you miss the final deadline. After midnight, February 28th, that's it. We cannot accept your plan. So make sure you get into the online system early. You can always start putting your materials into the online system, come back a couple of days later, pay your entry, come back again later, make sure everything is in there, but you must submit it before the final deadline. After that, there's nothing we can do about it. You've missed it. You're not in, your, your entry will not be judged at that point. Um, that is one of the big things. Um, when you 
submit your entry, you must have paid it first. So you have to pay online and then you will be redirected back into the site and you have to still submit the entry. So when you go to view entries, if you see incomplete, click on the incomplete and it will tell you exactly what you're missing. Make sure you do this step because it will save you a lot of peace of mind. Uh, when you're submitting your work plan, make sure that you use um, 8 and a half by 11 standard format, standard font size, Arial 10. Um, don't push the margins to the absolute edge because if a judge for some reason has to print your work plan to take a look at it and all the text around it is cut off, they won't be able to read it properly. So, so those are actually some of the, uh, the problems in the past. Um, if you read the instructions in the call for entries that Joe keeps referring to, it's in there. You'll see. You just have to look over and you'll see. Um, if you are doing work on behalf of a client, you must include a permission letter from them. If it's an email, if you had uh, permission in an email, just PDF that email as long as it has the person's name, company, and the date that uh, they gave permission and what they were giving permission for, that's fine. Just load it into the online system. Um, we can't accept it. We can't accept work done for someone else without their permission. Uh, make sure that you include um, a high-res company logo. If you're a winner, it's going to be on the PowerPoint presentation at the gala. It's going to be in the program. It's going to be all over the place. You re really, really want to make sure that you include it. Um, and also two photos or images, you can include two photos um, that best represent your entry. And that again is going to be used uh, for recognition at the gala and for other pieces. Um, one of the sections on the online system is um, team members. List everyone that contributed to your project in there. You need to have the lead person and everybody that participated in that program. You won't have options to add them later when we ask you whose names you want listed on your plaque or your statue. Uh, you can't add names at that point. You have to put down everyone that worked on the plan with you. And I, we don't mean on the Ovation Award entry plan, we mean on the project that you were working on. Um, so that's about all that you need. Um, you just have to, when you're all set up, uh, we recommend that you put your materials together um, before you even go to the online system. But you can go in and um, create your entrant uh, profile. And then after you've done that, um, you can start creating your entries by clicking on the Add Entry button. Um, there is there's member pricing available up until the deadline, so you want to make sure that you put your IBC Toronto your IBC member number in. There's a space to put that in. If you're not 100% sure whether you are a member, uh, because maybe you're under a corporate plan, you can call the IBC Toronto office and they will verify for you or you can email them at toronto-info at ibc.com. They'll verify and let you know. They'll give you your member number. You just put it in and apply for the through the uh, special pricing. Uh, so where do you go to enter online? Well, to enter online, um, the address is in the um, call for entries and it's also on the IABC Toronto website on the Ovation pages. Uh, so you just go there, you click on that, it'll take you to the site, then you just start creating your entrant profile and then adding your entries, pay and submit. Okay, so when you're in the online system, the order that it goes, there's tabs at the top that you'll see, you put in the first thing you do is put in what you put in on your work plan, your entry information, division, category, title, 
you choose the award of distinction category um, that your organization falls under, such as a boutique agency of the year, small agency of the year, mid-size agency, large agency, or a corporate communications department. So the reason you choose that is because if you have, uh, if you're, the scoring of all your entries um, is higher than the score of everybody else's entries in the same division, you could walk away with an award of distinction. And um, everybody loves to have an award of distinction. So don't forget to put that information in. You're also going to be asked for your entry summary that uh, Joe spoke about. Um, that will go into any um, promotional materials or recognition materials, and it's also going to be used to help judge the People's Choice Award. So make sure you have that down as well. Okay, so there's the information to check if you're a member rate or if you're having a payment problem. Uh, you can contact the office, toronto-info at ibc.com or 416-968-0264. Okay, and as I mentioned, very important, review your entry before submitting it. Uh, you'll see an incomplete if there's something missing. Um, so click on the incomplete, it'll tell you what's missing. Click on each thing that's missing, go through the process. Uh, you can pay at any time. You don't have to pay at the end, pay early in case you run into some problems. Uh, we can solve it to you before the deadline. Uh, there's a help section on the online system. You can check there. Um, you'll receive an email confirming that you've submitted and paid and no entries will be accepted after the final deadline of February 28th, 2014, midnight. Um, if you have problems, you can send me an email. I'm always monitoring the back end and I'm sure that I've probably I've been in contact with some of you already. Uh, Toronto-awards at IABC.com will come to me. Uh, the office is only open until 4 o'clock for calls and help related to entering the Ovation Awards. So start your entries early. Good luck. Now we're going to take some questions. I see a question here. If you just want to type them into the chat, uh, we will answer them for you. So. Um, someone collaborated on a project and they would like to submit. Okay, so it's a question as to a permission. Um, so they have someone, um, she, they worked with someone else on a design and communication project and they were subcontracted uh, on the project and they want to know if they could enter. Yes, you can enter. Um, you have to list everybody, um, the, the client um, and the people working on the contract have to be listed and you'll need permission from the client and from the person that contracted you saying that they're okay with you entering and they all all the team members have to be listed so yes that is that's what you would that's what the letter of permission is for uh, yes 10 pieces for the work sample um, Yes, 10 different pieces. So let's say you have um, some images that are part of um, a commercial, an ad commercial. So you have three different ads, but they're all part of one stream. You can PDF all three of those together as one and to give a general idea. So yes, it's 10 pieces that you can upload, but if there's some that belong distinctly together, especially when it comes to images, uh, just PDF them together. Um, not If you PDF 100 of them together, like I mentioned, not all of them will be looked at, but it'll give a feel to the judge of, of what you're trying to, what your message is there. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Joe, this might be for you. Uh, is it suitable for a blog to be entered in Division 1 Category 13, which is 
that's uh, I think that's social media. Let me just check. Yes. So okay. So social media or what was the other category? Or Division Two, Category Fourteen. Yeah, my. Um, uh, it depends why you're putting it in. Um, if you can write about the blog and more about what it's done, and it's the overall blog that you want to. Um, to put in, then I don't know that I'd go into category 14, writing, because uh, that's very, very um, specific to slightly more individual pieces once you get into uh, communication skills. That's really much more um, specific. Now, I was thinking as well, um, there was another category, and sorry, I'm just looking through the um, You might also want to think about maybe, um, where is it? Uh, well, maybe a category 12 um, as well. To a, you know, it depends why you're putting that blog in, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, what is it about it that you think is actually the strongest piece of it and is going to um, win awards? Um, and why, um, you know, what did you, what was the purpose of creating it and what are you measuring on your blog? And then reread those um, categories and it, it will probably pop out at you in terms of where it should best go. Okay, so I'm just going to follow up to the question about uh, work samples and how many can be PDF together. Uh, okay, so it's considered one. However, um, I would not put samples um, like different images from different, let's say you're having a, a range of events. If you're going to have um, an image from each event um, and there's a hundred of them, I would just choose the ones that represent best. It's best to put in fewer samples that are that speak directly to the plan and show your best work than to just submit everything. So you can have a PDF of the images or whatever that you like together, um, but just like as I mentioned, choose your best work. Um, I would not PDF together a communication plan and a budget and pictures. Um, just keep the pictures together, plan is separate, budget separate, um, that sort of thing. I hope that answers the question. If not, um, you can follow up with me directly and uh, I'll provide detailed uh, information on that. <laughs> 